Thank you guys for tuning in to another exciting episode of Allow Me to Retort. I've got some interesting stories for you guys. This is the first time I've been back since Joe Biden has become president, officially sworn in and all that trash. So let's just get into it. First, we're going to be talking about Joe appointing a queer assistant health secretary, Joe appointing a black secretary of defense. Over 100 civil rights groups beg Joe to not crap all over him, but I bet you he'll still do it. And Joe is the gayest president in U.S. history and it hasn't even been a month yet. All that and more on today's episode of Allow Me to Retort. Thank you guys for tuning in to another video today. Uh, remember to leave a comment down below, like and hit subscribe because I don't upload videos on a very set schedule. You can see that it's probably been like a week and a, and a half or maybe two weeks since I've uploaded my last video. Uh, so when I come back, you want to get in on the loop. You want to see what I'm talking about. So subscribe, ring that bell and make sure you get your notifications on or whatever. So that way, you know, when I upload a new video. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about our president joe biden who may not be president for very long but let's just see what he's been doing in his first few days in the white house uh joe biden has appointed dr rachel levine as assistant secretary of health a historic first for transgender people this person here is supposed to be Rachel Levine, but it's not really. That's Richard Levine, a man who is parading as a woman wearing a dress. Um, Joe Biden has made them assistant secretary of health, which to me is just all kinds of ironic and crazy and backwards. Uh, transgender people, or people who think that they can flip flop their genders, are probably some of the most unscientific uh, people in the world, they're they're so disconnected with reality, they can't make informed decisions about their own health. Yet Joe Biden has decided to put them in charge of health for the country. Uh, it made them a very crucial part of this country's health making decisions, which is the most backwards thing ever. They've they've already proven that they're irresponsible with their own health. There's nothing nothing that can soundly back up this decision to chop off your member and parade yourself as a woman other than it makes you feel good other than that there's nothing medically uh, beneficial about doing this so yet you're going to put this person in charge of making medical decisions across the country it's uh, all kinds of backwards uh, joe biden's backwards and i think this along with the other stories i'm going to cover uh, show you exactly what we're in for for the next four years and let me tell you something i don't think black people are going to like it too much either uh, joe biden doesn't seem to be caring too much about you mr uh you had the vote for joe biden because otherwise you weren't black Oh, we'll see how that works out for you guys in just a second. Something else Joe Biden has done that the black people may like is that he's appointed a, the first black secretary of defense or defense secretary. He's made this person a nominee. I think they've already been sworn in or whatever. I'm not sure. Um, but this this move actually got pushed back uh, because he just got off of active duty. He was recently serving in the military and the Pentagon wants the military. It's supposed to technically be citizen run. And and so what they have is a policy that says you cannot be uh, secretary of defense if you served the military within the last seven years. You have to be retired or out of service and be a citizen for over seven years in order to do this. And I think I read in this article here in the past 70 years. Yes, in the past 70 years, there's only been two exceptions. And the last exception was for the person that Trump nominated. Um, now, the reason that this is a problem a lot of people are saying that this exception should be extremely rare and it should only happen maybe once in a generation so for us to see it immediately after uh, a per last president's nomination is kind of you know untraditional uh, but joe biden doesn't really care too much about tradition i think his whole entire goal is to get into the white house and make everything gay and black and retarded and two of those things are okay i mean retarded people can't help it but what Joe Biden is doing here is pandering so hard to one demographic that 
there's nothing that is going to make sense on the table. His actions aren't necessarily based on who's the best person for the job. I think it's based on who's the gayest and who's the blackest person for the job. And we're going to see a lot of that happening in our country, I believe. Joe Biden is going to get a lot of uh, gay and black and minority or whatever people in there so that we've got this entire rainbow cabinet and it's not going to be truly to serve the American people or advance the American people. It's going to be advance this agenda. Now, on top of Austin Lloyd's uh, recent military service, there was also some people who were criticizing some things that he'd done in Asia, saying that he may not necessarily be the perfect pick for the job. But once again, that goes into what I was saying, is that Joe Biden's not picking the people who are the best for the job. But we're going to see this. We're going to see a lot of this, along with the uh, Dr. Richard, the transgender guy who he's given this job to. I don't think, and not to take anything away from this guy, Austin Lloyd, or, or Lloyd Austin, who served our country, and I believe he probably served honorably and did his job well but from what i'm reading him and dr richard there may have been and in dr richard's case there definitely were more qualified people to fill these positions but they were overlooked and ignored because affirmative action in the case of the black man and because of i don't know i guess it's still affirmative action if you're transgender whatever it is these people are diversity hires and that is the greatest insult in the world to me to be hired or given a position based solely or heavily on your race or your background or something some of those factors that you can't control oh you're black here have this thing we're so sorry that you're black i am so so sorry here's this thing to apologize for you being black it's insulting right it's extremely insulting uh but that's where we are right now and we're going to see a lot more of this Speaking of insulting and horrible things, more than 100 civil rights groups agree we don't need new domestic terrorism laws. Now, what is this about? I think this is the biggest story uh, that I'm going to be talking about right now. Um, using the Patriot Act and certain amendments and other sections, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are pushing hard to expand the definition of domestic terrorism and to capture more people under that umbrella. Um, this is extremely scary. The Patriot Act was already extremely scary. It gave the government a lot of uh, power as far as search and seizure of people's goods and as far as who they can spy on and, and whose rights and liberties that they can take away, all because you were labeled a domestic terror. Uh, there have been extremely positive movements that have taken place throughout history, civil rights movements that would now be defined as domestic terrorism by uh, some of these new policies. And what Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are proposing is only going to make those things worse. And over a hundred civil rights groups agree that despite the fact that they're trying to push back and say this is about white supremacists and this is about uh, Trump supporters or whatever you have it, uh, this is going to be detrimental to people who actually want to stand up against injustice because they could be labeled domestic terrorists. Let's take a look here. Civil rights groups across the country are urging President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris, as well as congressional Democrats, to not pass new laws to address any potential threats from white nationalists emboldened by loyal and former President Donald Trump. 135 civil rights organizations ranging from religious groups, immigration advocates, LGBT organizations to the American Civil Liberties Union and the NAACP expressed their concerns about calls to pass new criminal laws in the wake of the riot and temporary invasion of the U.S. Capitol by Trump supporters, a.k.a. patriots. So this is a very wide spanning group of people who think joe biden and kamala harris are making a bad bad choice here it's not just your white people it's not your typical trump supporters that you like to label as the bad guys the naacp and these weird lgb elemental p groups have all got together and they've said whoa wait a minute this stuff could affect us too and that is true because it could because some of those protests that they do when they obstruct uh, maybe a government street or obstruct a military movement or something like that could potentially put them in harm's way put themselves in harm's way and with the patriot act if you do anything that uh, would put other people in harm's way uh, in mass or impede government function, you could be considered a domestic terrorist. So a protest that may necessarily impede government function or put yourself and others in harm's way, even if it's yourself, even if everybody in the protest has decided to take that risk themselves, they could now be considered domestic terrorists 
uh, because they're putting themselves in harm's way and impeding the flow of government or impede, impeding government military action, whatever that may be. So you don't have to stretch your imagination too far to imagine a situation where injustice is being done by a tyrannical government and that people have decided to protest it and then bam, slap, you are labeled a domestic terrorist and Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are pushing very hard for that. It's more control over the people. And the very people who voted for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, these LGB people and uh, this NAACP people, I guarantee you these LGBT people and the NAACP were huge uh, supporters of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And here we are, what are we, not even two weeks into the presidency, and they are now begging for them to not do something. You guys made a very, very dumb decision. I guarantee you. Now, listen, I've got some regrets and some things that I didn't like that Trump did, but it wasn't two weeks in. All right. The first few years of Trump's presidency up into this coronavirus thing, Republicans and conservatives and patriots, we were ecstatic. All right. I've had a few gripes here and there about what Trump was doing, but it wasn't two weeks in. Two weeks in to Joe Biden's presidency, the LGBT and the NAACP and all these other groups that probably rallied and supported Joe Biden are already begging him, stop, hold on, wait, what are you doing? And here's the thing about it. I would not be surprised. As a matter of fact, I'm almost counting on it that your pleads are going to fall on deaf ears because you made a very dumb decision when you showed up and you cast your ballot. If you believe this many people really did cast their ballot that way for Joe Biden and Kamala Frickin' Harris. Speaking more to decisions that Joe Biden is making that's going to negatively affect lots of people. Uh, one of the first things he did, I think it was day one, he signed several executive orders undoing a lot of what people are now labeling anti-LGB or anti-transgender uh, bills that were passed by Trump. But these bills that were passed or signed by Trump, they weren't anti-anything. They were just pro-woman. Uh, they were pro-military. They were pro-keeping people safe. And they were pro-logic. Uh, Joe Biden decisions are lacking logic they're lacking uh, consideration for women and uh, traditional gender ideas they're lacking uh, any support or any any consideration for doing things the right way so it's not necessarily that Trump was bills were anti anything it's just that Joe Biden's bills are anti Trump let's take a look at what he did here so uh, this outlines a few of the biggest uh, changes that you'll see the first thing here is prohibit the discrimination and employment under the title 7 of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 I don't think discrimination is okay it's wrong but what I do think is that we should let society regulate itself that way. I, I believe in minimal government interference. What do I mean by that? If I go and apply for some job and it turns out that I got rejected solely because I was black, I'm going to be upset. And then what I should do is tell people that job didn't, that guy didn't give me a job just because I was black. And then people should get pissed and they should not want to shop there. And that business should go under because we don't tolerate racism here in the United States. That's what should happen. That person who owns that business should not be arrested. They should not be, uh, you know, have their job stripped away from them. The government shouldn't come in and find them because that they're horrible, trashy, racist or sexist or whatever. They should be able to try and do whatever they can, cut out their little slice of life, their little racist slice of life. I believe 100% they should have the freedom to do that. And I think that what the government is doing here is I don't want it. I think there was once a time and a place for this when people's minds needed to be changed because they had grown up seeing one thing and being exposed to one thing. And there was 90% of the country who believed in that one thing and it was horrible. But now in today's time, that is not the case. People are not evil people there's not enough racist or sexist or hateful people in the united states that they could continue to thrive this way let me remind you that obama won popular vote twice which means more white people than black people voted for obama he could not have done it just with black votes he had to get more white people to vote for him than black people did in order to win so what that tells me is that there ain't that many racists out there. There's not because he was able to win with the popular vote. If it was if America was so racist and so hateful, Obama would have never won with popular vote. So I don't think we need government reaching in and saying you need to be forced to accept these people. I think these people 
on both sides, whether you're gay or whether you're anti-gay or whatever, I think they both can find their own place to stay in their own little gay or anti-gay bubbles. And the government should not come down there and reach in and say, you and you, you have to get along. Uh, this is the situation that we had with the one guy who refused to make a cake uh, because it was for a gay wedding or whatever like that. That's not OK for the government to come in and say you're going to lose your business or you're going to be fined. This is discrimination for not making a cake that you don't want to make. There are hundreds and thousands of bakeries out there that this gay couple could have gone to to get their cake made. They could have gone anywhere in the world. And if this was really such a bad thing, if not making a cake for a gay wedding is so horrible, I believe that people should have voted with their dollar. If you believe, whether you're gay or straight or whatever, that it's so wrong for this guy to have denied making this gay wedding cake, then we should have all agreed to not go to his business, and his business should have gone under solely from lack of traffic, not because of any news articles or government interference. It should have been solely that people were disgusted by the fact that, oh, he didn't make a gay cake. That's not cool. I don't think I'm going to shop there. Instead, you guys are advocating for more and more government interference, and you're going to see more like the last story I said when they get this government interference and it doesn't align with how you think when they pass the new Patriot Act that negatively affects you, don't sit there and cross your arms and pout and be mad and angry about it and all up in arms because this is what you asked for. You guys are advocating for the government to come in and have more power and more control over what people can think and say and do. And then when it negatively affects you, you're going to be sitting there looking like deers in the headlights and the government train is going to come and run you right over. Sorry about that tangent. Anyway, prohibition of the discrimination in education under Title IX, the education amendments in 1972. Uh, now, this is a hot topic. This is extremely important because the example they give here, the, and by the way, these examples they give in this article are so full of crap. They give you these horrible case examples. So you think, well... I don't want that to happen. This must be a good thing. But they don't tell you the other end of it is how it negatively affects people. In this example, a gay student cannot be prohibited from going to his high school prom just because his date is also a boy. And a transgender girl cannot be harassed by a teacher who refuses to correct her name because it is a feminine name. So you're like, well... A teacher just refusing to call a kid a different name, well, that's rude of that teacher. I don't want this. I think I'm in support of this bill. That's right. Well, what they don't tell you is that the Title IX thing is also negatively affecting girls' sports, okay? The, we're talking about this big debate that's been going on for years where, especially in women's track, that men are all of a sudden saying, oh, I'm a girl now. And mediocre men who did mediocre all their life and mediocre in all their sports, they then go into these female sports and then they dominate. They become number one and they push all these girls that were number one, two, and three, they push them back to spots number four, five, and six because they're having to compete with biological men who can run faster, who have stronger muscles, stronger bone density, uh, higher stamina, all naturally. These are things that they were born with and that is why we separate men and women's sports. What this is doing, Joe Biden is getting rid of that, meaning that no matter what level the girl wants to compete at, it's going to be unfair. Starting in K through 12, you're going to have to be a man and sit down with your little girl and tell her, look, you lost because that girl, boy, whatever thing is just better than you. They were just built better than you. And as much as you work out or as much as you try and strive to be a faster swimmer or a runner or a pole vaulter or a jumper, if they work just as hard as you, they're always going to be better. As a matter of fact, they don't even have to work as hard as you. They can work just a little bit less hard as you and they're going to be better because that's just how they're built and you weren't built as good. Sorry, honey. That's what you're going to have to sit down. You are gonna have to have that talk with your daughter and let her know she's going to have to get used to second and third place fourth and fifth place whenever she steps on the field and sees one of those wide-armed thick-necked adam's apple having women she's going to have to be prepared to take second third fourth place because she ain't getting in first there's just no way that is what joe biden's bill is passing and it's very disingenuous 
from them to give you this crappy example of some boy being denied to go to prom because his prom date is also a boy, which is gross, but that's not what we're talking about here. You can have a whole separate uh, policy just for that. But anyway, guys, those are all the stories I have for you guys. What do you think about this? Joe Biden is definitely setting up to be the gayest president in history and uh, probably going to be one of the most powerful presidents in history. They're using all kinds of excuses to expand the military and government power, uh, putting people in place to make sure uh, we don't go out. I think he just signed a hundred day mass mandate or maybe he's asking us uh, politely, hey, why wear your mask for a hundred days or else. Um, it's, it's all coming down the pipeline. We're about to see a very totalitarian government here, and it's going to start with this expansion of the Patriot Act and uh, domestic terrorism, which is going to put a lot of your civil rights, a lot of your activist groups in harm's way. Uh, and so it's very funny. I think you guys are getting a dose of your own medicine. I mean, not you guys in particular. If you're watching my video, you probably voted red. But for those of you who voted blue, uh, you're going to see a lot of unhappy things come down the pipeline if Joe Biden is allowed to run unchecked. Uh, I believe it was the North Korean uh, press leader who came out and said Joe Biden is a rabbit dog who needs to be beat with a stick uh, until he is dead or something like that. And Trump came out and he defended Joe Biden. He said Joe Biden is not a rabbit dog. Uh, he's somewhat better than that. Um, but all I'm saying is that North Korea may have known or saw something that we didn't see. And um, it's just very interesting. But anyway, those are all the things that I have for you guys today. I'm Anthony, and this is Allow Me to Retort.